Today's episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the gym aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where gym aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 35th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into some of the top minds of the best practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by my good friend, Graham Morris. Grammy, thanks for being with me, brother. How you doing, brother? You good? Man, I am sensational. How are you? Oh, I'm very good, yeah. Great. We're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not in full isolation, so I'm allowed outside and everything, so I'm doing a lot better than others. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a lot in my backyard, and that's about it. But <laughs> Well, listen, buddy, before we get too far into this, yeah. Who is Graham Morris? Who am I? Uh, I'm just a strength coach, I guess, strength conditioning coach. I grew up on a farm, man. Um, and so that background and kind of fell in love with athletic performance. And at the moment, I'm just kind of working in more general pop. But then I've got all my – started building up this online stuff and I'm working with plenty of fighters online now. Um, previously I was doing a bit of rugby league and, uh, yeah, I'm just with all this crazy stuff going at the moment, just trying to build a few things on the side because we never know what's going to happen. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and with everything right now, it's definitely hundred percent. We never know what's going to happen. And on top of that, a guy who's, who, who can fight a little bit too. I, no, 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 no. I'm just that. Uh, one of those try-hard guys that goes to the gym, gym and throws a few videos up online. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Try it. If, if you don't follow Grammy, you need to because he, I'll tell you what. Like As a soccer player, I've seen people get kicked. I haven't never seen nobody kick somebody like Grammy kicks people. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, people kick back. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, they do. But, uh, before this, um, this this thing went down, I was, I was actually hoping, I was getting ready for my, my first fight. Um, it was just going to be what they call like a development day, where it's a little bit, the, first, the first couple of fights are padded. I was going to give it a crack, but, you know, I just hit 37 as well. So the missus wasn't too keen, but I was, I was keen to have a crack anyway. Um, see, see, what, see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ring. dude, 100%. Yeah. You know, and the fact yes. that you've been working with fighters for a while and, and the fact that you're able to get in the, in the ring is pretty awesome. But, you know, the other thing, too, Grammy, that it, we met at CVASPs because of CVASPs, yeah. and you're a guy who is extremely inquisitive and always trying to hone his craft even more. But if you wouldn't mind for us, describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. 
Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, I think there's a couple here. One's more, I guess, talking about strength qualities kind of thing, or another one's more probably what's happening with what's going on now. But one, one, I was, last year I was involved at a club, and uh, well, I've seen this happen to a lot, plenty of clubs, and where you see someone get let go, and then you realise probably how disposable we are, and uh, and even like with this whole thing that's happening right now, everyone, all these um, Australian rule sides and all these rugby league sides, guys have been let go without pay. Um, just this is how disposable we are. So um, that's one thing I, I think. So I think have, building a good network and uh, having your fingers in lots of different areas is probably pretty beneficial. Um, and then more on a physical performance side, this is a, this is a, what, three years ago. Me, me and Kia went to uh, Thailand. We went to that Tiger Muay Thai, and um, I was doing some clinch. I did, did some one on ones with this guy, and I think the guy had like 300 fights, and he was like 70, 70 kilos or something. And I was like 105 or something at the time. And this guy just ragdolled me, he just picked me up, was throwing me around. And even now in my gym, I've got two Thai guys. I, I, I um, I trained with, and they're about 70 kilos. And they've had about 300 fights, and I started training them in the gym. And that one of them can't even, couldn't even dumbbell press 10 kilos for 10 reps. 10 reps, couldn't even. I swear to God, and he's just he's dropping guys on his head, 110 kilos. What's that? 230, 240 pounds. He's just tossing them on his head. So, I guess from that point of view, and from what I learned when I was back in Thailand, that strength isn't everything. Um, and there's a lot of different aspects to physical performance and sometimes a lot of the stuff that we do, we're just trying to support athlete development rather than just uh, sometimes we just need to get out of the way and just and let the athletes be, um, do what they do best and just support what they do. Yeah, dude, because I think all too often, like we sit here and we think like, oh, well, they got to do this exercise for that many reps or X, Y, mm. or Z and it's like, Bro, we go, yeah, I think we're, we're going so deep down that rubber hole. We need to measure this, 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 and this. Does it all, does it matter? I don't know. Like, I know that's what we're supposed to do, but I think there's a lot of other different um, variables that we need to take care of as well and not not get obsessed with um, a number that's just found, a general, general quality that's found in the weight room all the time. Yeah, man, no doubt. Because at the end of the day, the best player is the best player. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Just keep him on the field, brother. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Keep him on the field and keep him happy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, bro. Oh, guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I am in that camp as well. But, you know, the other thing too, bro, like as an inquisitive guy, like I'm actually fired up to hear this from you too. Mm. If Graham could ask one question and he knows that he would get the answer from it, what would that question be and why? What would that one? Okay, one question be before I guess this has just recently changed, but I always wanted to know what should be my next plan going ahead, um, and if I knew the answer to that, that way. I could have a better career down the track, you know, because previously I haven't been really, uh, I guess, happy with where I am in my career. And I always thought if I had the answer to that, maybe that way I could go down that direction. But I was just, we we're just discussing before off air about how I was reading that book, um, Range by um, David Epstein. And he basically says like, just compare yourself to where you were yesterday, not to others. Um, just learn a variety of different things and keep growing every day. And then, you know, eventually you, you go down your own path. So I've, even though that was what I wanted to know, probably I think I don't have to worry about that so much now. So I don't know if that's a good answer, but yeah. No, man. I think that a lot of this ties together though. Cause you're talking about yeah. like how you're watching people let go and, and then, you know, stepping aside from the rugby team and yeah, having a backup plan and where do you need to go yeah. next? I think that it really is important and something that more and more people are talking about, right? Is that yeah, 
the disposableness of what we do. When I, in October, November, when I decided there was a few reasons why I had to um, finish up with rugby, I couldn't go ahead. Um, a lot of us to, to do with financials, um, amongst other things. But I was like, I need to have a backup plan here um, before I come back into the game. I need to have something because I've seen this all happen around me. But all preseason, I was like, I was spewing. I was like, I was like, I've made a mistake here. I've been left out. Um, but in hindsight, it's actually worked out okay because. Everything's been uh, stopped anyway, and I'd be able to create a few systems and put things in place, which everyone's been kind of forced to do anyway. So I'm kind of lucky in the, the fact that I've been able to play around and experiment with these different things anyway. So it's kind of hasn't worked out too bad for me in that, in that respect. Yeah. yeah, and I think that this is something that a lot of people are starting to understand and learn more about. Yeah. And, you know, with the quieter time that we have, or people yeah. are having to get outside their comfort zone and learn more things like that. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, when you're putting a deep end and, um, you know, money stops coming through in times like this, your gyms are being shut down and that you just got to, I don't really like that word hustle, but that's, you got to, you got to find different ways and options, um, of making money. But I think if we get, get out the other end, it's going to benefit all of us. Yeah. No rather, rather just, yeah, rather than just being stuck in that weight room all the time, just being, uh, I guess really single-minded. No doubt, man. No mm. doubt. I mean, a good friend of ours says there's a big difference between being busy and being productive. <laughs> yeah. But listen, Grammy, you know, you're yeah. a dude that that does do a lot and works a lot and trains a lot and, and does a lot of things. So what's your escape, brother? My escape? Bro, I like, tra- I like training. I like going down to the fight gym with the boys, hanging out with them learning a new skill, um, just forget about everything else. Um, going down to the gym, yeah, just training and learning something new. Uh, and then I also lo- I love reading as well. Like even though it's in this, my escape is also actually learning and upskilling. And and when I get the opportunity, I guess go outside. That's always fun as well. We, we kind of get stuck in that gym and, don't see much light sometimes, so it's, it's good to get outside, especially in Australia. Dude, yeah, especially because, you know, you're coming into fall right now, so it's everything's turning and being nice out and all that. Yeah, like, bro, about oh, two months ago, I went back to my, my parents just bought a new farm, went down to the, to the country, like, um, Western Australia, it's a five-hour flight from here, but back to the farm is the best. It's like no one there. I went to the beach. With my brother, I did a couple of kilometers. We did like 3K run or something. I didn't see anyone for three kilometers. What's that, two? Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm running along the beach, no one there. Like, perfect. So, it's pretty cool. We've got spots like that over here as well. Yeah. Could be worse, brother. Could be worse. Granny, yeah. <laughs> truly appreciate your time, brother. This is great stuff. Thanks, Jay. Awesome, yeah, bro. Man. All right, buddy. Great to see you. Glad to see you doing well. We'll be in touch soon. Take care, bro. Cheers. Thank you.